What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about one of the hottest topics in tournament bass fishing and that's this little guy right here. So has forward facing sonar completely ruined tournament bass fishing? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section and we're about to talk about it. I watched him eat that one. On the Dominican. Yes, sir. I watched him eat it. So guys, electronics and fishing have been evolving like crazy in the last five, ten, five to 10 years. And so I'm gonna show you my setup um, and kind of talk about it because it's gonna be part of the video. So let's get into, you know, I've got my, my trolling motor, of course, I've got my mega Humminbird Mega 360 transducer. And then I've also got my Humminbird Mega Live transducer, my Solix 12 and my Helix 10. So guys, uh, it might sound insane, but that's a pretty standard basic setup compared to some of these guys especially the pros you know these guys are spending upwards to fifty thousand dollars on graphs and transducers and uh so you know we're going to talk about some of the changes that they've made in the professional levels in today's video and and it's not going to be a, a drama filled video like me crying and complaining choosing sides because i honestly don't care either way i'm still going to fish because i love to fish and luckily I don't fish professionally, so none of these rules even affect me. So guys, if you follow professional fishing, uh, these this first little half of the video is not going to be any surprise to you. So MPFL, um, they completely banned forward-facing sonar. I'm not sure if that's Mega 360 included, but I just know that any forward-facing transducer is banned. Completely gone the whole season. Bassmaster had some limitations. I believe they went to one transducer and they limited the total size screens to 55 inches in total. Uh, Cause you know, some of these guys, they're running like three 15 inch screens back here and three 15 inch screens up front. And so Bassmaster claimed it was a safety hazard. And I can see that. Then MLF, uh, the Bass Pro Tour, they regulated it to where you can use forward facing sonar one period out of three periods. So anyways, we talked about the updates in professional fishing. Uh, now we're gonna dive into like, you know, just how the techniques and strategies practicing tournaments uh baits rods all all the gear has completely changed so guys one thing that stands out to me in the last couple of years is you know back when you used to watch professional fishing several years ago you know they'd be all throwing casting rods bait casters big heavy baits big jigs stuff like that like big bait fishing and now it's like everybody has swapped to the spinning rod spinning setups and they're just super finessey, throwing like small Demiki rigs, ball head jigs, strolling, what, whatever you want to call it. Pinging a minnow is what I like to call it. But you know, like two, three inch baits, especially in the winter time, that cold water setting, this thing is just hard to beat. And you can't blame these guys for doing that because of how much money has been won in the professional series by doing this. And so like when you look on the rod of all, all the pros decks, it's like... 90% spinning rods when it used to be like they'd have 15 bait casters on the deck and one or two spinning rods and so it's changed a ton in that aspect and I actually saw something not too long ago it was a it was a company talking about how their spinning setups like five years ago they would hardly have anybody buy them for bass fishing and now the spinning setups and all these small finesse type tackle is just selling out of the roof compared to all the older stuff like your casting rods and your bigger baits and stuff you know like ordering tackle i just bought a normally i'd be buying crank baits and and power fishing stuff this time of year but you know just i got a whole box from tackle warehouse right here and a bunch of small jig head tungsten jig heads for pinging a minnow you know a 3 16th eighth ounce weight i mean eighth ounce weight that's insane. I never thought that I'd be throwing an eighth ounce weight unless, of course, you know, I'm sight fishing or, or something. But, you know, like this is this is a three sixteenth ounce weight with that little spunk shad. This is like a three inch bait. And it, it's just insane now that you can see the fish that used to be so hard to catch when they would suspend. You can see them feeding on bait balls and see the behavior of that fish. You know, now you can see that fish, throw it out there 
and literally watch your bait come right by that fish and you know depending on how that fish reacts you know he might bite it he might not you might have to speed up the bait you might have to drop the bait whatever the case may be you know it's just crazy the stuff that you can do with the forward facing sonar now and um another thing i want to talk about is you know the tournament fishing or the practice fishing strategizing um you know back when i first started getting into tournament fishing about 10 years ago you know we would we would practice hard and get spots like we would just have our milk run of spots and we'd hit that and you know if they didn't work you know you're like oh well, crap i just have to go fish some random stuff and get lucky and now like you can you still strategize those areas and you have your milk runs and stuff but if you're focused on like a point you know of course you're going to fish that point but they might not be where you caught them in practice and now with forward facing sonars you can you can back off that point where wherever you know if there's a brush pile of a tree or something you can go pan around and see where those fish have moved back five to ten years ago you couldn't do that you know if they weren't on the point you're just like well crap i gotta go find them somewhere else so in in that case it's like it takes the the importance of practice down a hair practicing is still very important but you know you can always get lucky or you have a better chance to find them uh if they're if they're not on the spot that you're fishing you know like a, a hump or a point or anything you know you can go pan around and find them you know especially these big open body water of lakes especially like uh, herring lakes where these fish roam and chase these big schools of blueback herring you know those fish would go crazy and, and places like that you know forward facing is king it's absolutely king i think it's a necessity 90 percent of the time to have it if you want to win but yeah guys like every it's changed the industry completely and i like it i think it's fun now watching it professional fishing watching it it's super boring when they're sitting there pinging a minnow you know you're just staring at their backs while they're staring down at the screen super boring but as far as fishing with it i love it it's fun the only thing that i'd be concerned about is uh the conservation side of it you know because now we're getting those fish that five to ten years ago they would never get caught because nobody knew they were there they were just roaming you know they they'd push aside from from this uh high spot this high community hole point uh shell bed hump stuff of that nature they'd push off of these areas and you know they wouldn't have any pressure and now we can just pan the transducer over there and see them and um you know, I'm not saying that if you see them, you can catch them because it's obviously a lot harder than that. But just the fact that you can, you know where they're at and you can follow them as they move throughout their patterns and stuff. Um, conservation is the only thing that I think of. And, uh, you know, I'm big on conservation. So I hope that our uh, wildlife biologists and all the people like that work with Humminbird, Garmin and Lawrence, I hope that there's being time and money invested to the research and making sure that uh, the conservation side of everything is, is good because I would hate to see like the levels and, and health health of our bass and our lakes go down because I love fishing. I want to always have fish to catch and especially for my kid to go out when she gets older and catch some fish. So guys, uh, that's pretty much all I got to say in this video. I was just going to hop on here and give my two cents, you know, just about everybody else has. And I was trying to stay out of it, but it's just such a, a good topic to talk about and something you know stating how much everything has changed as far as baits tackle practice and everything especially with the rule changes now and professional fishing i just thought it was a good idea to hop on here and talk about it let me know what you think down in the comments do you like forward facing uh do you want to see it go away in all the tours you want to see it go away completely let me know what you think overall has forward facing sonar ruined tournament bass fishing let me know guys make sure to like this video subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one